Today's story is so wild that it makes you wonder if this was a movie or real life. And unfortunately, in this case, it was real life. What if your mother-in-law was not only crazy, paranoid, but willing to kill, stalk, do whatever she can knowing that she has a lot of money and can get away with anything? How would you deal with a mother-in-law or a family member that could potentially cost you your job, your status? Someone that puts you in a position that makes it so hard to stand up against them because you have a lot at stake. Today's story is about an innocent young woman's life that was taken away and how relatives can be your worst enemy. And it is so hot in this room, I am literally sweating my balls off right now. <laughs> do you guys have any summer vacation plan? Because I don't know what to do this summer. I really want to do something but recession. I don't know if I should spend my money right now or not and what's happening to the economy. So let me know if you guys are doing anything this summer. I guess one way to spend a fun time without going outside and spending a lot of money is playing phone games. And one of my favorite games is Blackout Bingo. You guys know I've talked about Blackout Bingo so many times before and thank you so much to Black Alpen Go for partnering up with me again. If you love fast paced games, brain exercise games, and you want to make money on the go, Black Alpen Go is a game you want to play. I loved bingo since growing up, and the fact that you can do this on your phone is so convenient and it just brings back childhood memories. You and your competitor get the exact same bingo card, and the bingo numbers start getting faster and faster. So the winning is entirely based on how fast you react, and you go against whatever level you are on. So if you're intermediate, you go against intermediates. If you're advanced, like, like me, you go against the advanced because I'm really fast and smart like that. If you want to play for free, you could play free head-to-head -head games as well. If you're playing for cash, you could cash out anytime. I've been playing Blackout Bingo for months now and if you're on the app, you might get matched with me and actually play with me in real time. So it's so fun, so easy. You could use my code GET5 here and click the link down below in the description box and you get extra $5 free cash and play when you make your first deposit. Blackout Bingo has been an awesome supporter for my channel. Thank you so much to everybody who supports supports me just by checking out the sponsors of today's videos is really helping me to continue making these videos. This is Ha Chi He or Chi He Ha in English, who was only 21 years old back in 2002 or 23 in Korean age. She was known to be a very hardworking student, almost like the perfect child because she was so smart. She actually went to a prestigious law school. She was very productive and her life was all about school, home, library, study, that's it. She also loved swimming, so she would wake up super early, 5 a.m. sharp, in order to get to her swim class so that she has time for studying throughout the whole day. She was in her fourth year and she was preparing to take the bar exam, which is known to be one of the most difficult exams. Her dream was to also become a public defender. Public defenders, I believe, is hired by the state, so you're not a private lawyer. So essentially, you're helping out the lower income who can cannot afford a lawyer for whatever problems and court cases might come in your life. In her diaries, as I said, she writes home, studies, library. That was literally her schedule and this was kind of like what her daily life looked like. So entire day she would spend to study, study, study. And she was serious about wanting to have this career. It was March 6, 2002. Like any other day, she prepped to go to swim class at 5 a.m. and quietly left the house. House. That was the last day she would be ever seen alive because from then on, she would never pick up her calls nor come back home. Her parents knew right away something might be wrong and they reported her missing to the police. Immediately, the parents took action. They printed out flyers after flyers and handed out to as many people as they can. And unfortunately, at first, the police didn't really think this was a big case because, I mean, you know, young adults, they, they're adults, so maybe they might go off somewhere. Maybe she was like really stressed from studying. They really had no clues to go off of. The only thing was a milkman which was, I guess, back in the days, they had people who deliver milks every morning, and that was like the only person and the news delivery guy who would be up that early. So the milk delivery man said that he seems to have seen a suspicious car standing outside near the apartment 
for a couple days, but other than that, he really couldn't remember much information. So finally, the father convinced the police to gather CCTV around that area and they actually found something. The CCTV footage shows what looked like a black van that took Chihei around 5.30 a.m. in the morning. Now, as you see, the CCTV is very grainy and pretty dark to see anyone's faces. 10 long excruciating days pass and finally the parents got a call. The police notified Chia's family that they found her body. Her body was found in the wooded area around 12 miles away or 20 kilometers away from her house and a man that was hiking came across the body. She was covered in leaves, hands and feet tied, face was covered in tape and her arms show signs of multiple fractures, which is most likely due to her fighting back. And the most shocking of all that shook Korea was that she was actually shot with an air. In almost all, if not like 90% of cases in Korea, do not involve guns because guns are highly illegal in South Korea and citizens cannot ha have access to it. Police don't even have actually in Korea, which is, I know, crazy. But in this rare case, she was shot four times in the face and two times in the back. So who would maliciously kill a 21-year-old hard-working student? Or did she have a double life? I mean, like, people were so confused. Again, she was shot. This is not like any other crime cases out there. This is a big deal in Korea. There was no way this could have been a random attack. Because Chia's life was so clean and there was really nothing that they could find, they were trying to dig through their memories to see if there was anything off with their life or Chia's life that anyone could have done this. The only thing that police could do in the beginning was use hypnosis on the milkman. In Korea, actually, a lot of the cases they use hypnosis and apparently this is very effective in bringing people's memories. The milkman under hypnosis remembered a specific van, again, a black van that was parked near the apartment with two younger looking males on the slimmer side. He also remembered that one of the guys had a lot of acne on the face and through the hypnosis, they were able to actually draw a montage the possible suspects but this really provided no tips or clues to the police and nobody called in Chia's father had to think really really hard and the only thing only thing suspicious that he could think of was a couple months back these men came into his office seeking for investments or that they were the investors trying to put money into Chia's father's company the man introduced himself as Mr. Kim who was supposedly a wealthy man that owned trading companies and he was referred to him by someone Chia's father knew something was off because I mean who just comes into the office and says that they have millions of dollars that they want to invest in it just sounds too good to be true and he was was right. The men really could not answer much questions that Chia's father had about their company and money and things like that. And after that one encounter, they could not be reached. So with nothing to go off of, police looked into these people and it turns out this company was fake and the man pretending to be this wealthy man also used an alias name. So police was able to get this guy and put him for questioning. When they had these guys, these guys started Started to confess but they had absolute no relation to her they were not her previous exes boyfriend they confessed that they were actually ordered to do this ordered to execute Chie for a large sum of money so who ordered to kill this beautiful young lady person turns out to be miss yoon she was 58 years old and she was the wife of a successful mid-sized corporation ceo what would a 58 year old older woman have anything to do with a 21 year old girl and this is where the unbelievable story really starts to ooze out so a year prior to this whole incident, Chie actually went to court to get a restraining order against someone because she was being stalked for a very long time. I'm talking about spied on, like the movie. Like someone is literally spying on you 24 seven. And we're gonna come back to the stalking incident. So this woman, she's called Madame Yoon. She was known to be extra, very stingent and sort of an unbending person. 
Miss Yoon had a daughter that she really, really cared for. It was her one and only daughter and she would just give the world to her. So finally, Miss Yoon's daughter, it was time for her to get married. She was in her late 20s and she wanted to do a matchmaker for her daughter. Now she decided to use this woman's service, which was a marriage matching service for the upper class. So a upper class marrying another upper class or someone with a very high prestigious job. So Madam Yoon's daughter ended up meeting a man who was named, we're gonna call him Park. And Mr. Park was a judge. He was somewhere around his early 30s. But Park was actually not from a wealthy family, which was not the deal breaker because he was a judge and it was, you know, judges, lawyers, and doctors. That's really considered the respected high class career field. So Mr. Park and Madam Yoon's daughter ended up having a wedding and this wedding was supposedly extravagant and Madam Yoon just spent a lot of money because again this was one and only daughter. She just wanted to like pour everything to her. She also seemed to control a lot of things from who the daughter got married to, how they lived, their reputation, like everything was under her little fingers. Madam Yoon noticed everything about her daughter's marriage and with Mr. Park. For example, there's talks that a couple times when Park would have his parents come over to their house, his wife or Madame Yoon's daughter actually didn't want to hang out with her in-laws. So she'd go over to her parents' house, which made Madame Yoon seem like, oh my god, are you being cold to my wife? Why are you not spending time with her? I mean, like she would notice and take little situations and turn it into big balls of misunderstandings. And I'm sure you guys have met those kind of people in your life where they just take everything the wrong way. I mean, this is who Madame Yoon was. She would literally take everything and twist it to fit her narrative. The problem also seemed to stem from the fact that Park and Miss Yoon's daughter did not marry out of love. Also, they did not date for a long time before they got married. And it seemed like after they got married, they would bicker and fight a lot. And they seemed like they got married more for business reasons, like reputation, their job, careers. Now, according to Miss Yoon, she got a tip. One day, she got a quick call from someone, which we will later know that this was actually the matchmaker. I think Mr. Park is cheating on your daughter and just hung up. And this is really where everything started to blow up. Madam Yoon was convinced that her son-in-law was cheating on her daughter and this was not to be taken lightly. I believe that the family was all living together and this is actually very common in Korean families or Asian families. They don't really do that much anymore, but it is common even in wealthy families where if you get married, you actually live with your parents or your in-laws for about a year or two. It's supposed to be like this respectful thing, tradition thing, especially with this family too. They were living with their in-laws and their parents. So one day Mr. Park was on the phone and Madame Yoon started to overhear who he was talking to. To her, it sounded like a younger female voice that Park was talking to. Now Madame Park asked Yoon, who are you talking to? And Park said, oh, that's actually my cousin, my younger female cousin. And that younger female cousin turned out to be Chihye. Yes, they were actually related. Park and Chihye were cousins. Chihye, again, who was really into her studies and wanting to really pass his bar exam, would call up her cousin Park many times to really ask him questions because he was a judge, which does make sense. And it was said that they too, as cousins, also had a very close relationship. But Madame Yoon got so invested that she would actually go to Park's office late at night just to see if anybody, any female, would step into his, you know, building. Madame Yoon was obsessed. She was convinced that Park and his own cousin Chie were in an affair. And experts say that this could be because Madame Yoon actually herself being married to a very wealthy CEO, she actually noticed her own husband cheating on her throughout the years of her being married. So it seemed like she didn't want that kind of lifestyle for her daughter, but it just like obsessed and like it just ate her. Madame Yoon now started to wiretap Mr. Park. She would secretly listen in her conversations, check his emails, and scold him for coming even like a couple minutes late from work. She even went as far as to calling Tia herself, calling Tia's friends to check up on her and to see where she was. She was not satisfied, so she decided to hire some people to actually stalk 
on Chie and Park. Madame Yoon decided to hire her nephew to stalk and spy on the two in exchange for a large sum of money. The nephew also hired some other people and they would have these scary looking men literally stalk and follow Chie from the train station to her house to where she was. Like everywhere she was, she was being stalked 24-7. And the Madame Yoon's goal to these stalkers were telling them if they get one photo of the two meeting together, they will get a large sum of reward, like up to like $200,000. Now the spies would go and stalk Kan Chie, but they would only notice that she goes from home, library, swimming, that's it. The spies would say that she would go inside the library for hours and not come out because she was actually studying. Now they actually stalked her for a total of two years, you guys. And they would constantly tell Madame Yoon, I don't think there's anything going on. Like there was nothing that they could take photos of because there was really nothing going on. But Madame Yoon did not believe these stalkers. Madame Yoon actually even tried to stalk these stalkers to see if they were doing the, their job. When Madame Yoon did not get the answer she wanted, she would tell the spies, there's probably a way to get out of the library through the basement. And they're probably meeting down there in the basement secretly. So you have to go inside the library and stalk her there. She was literally building her own fantasy world in a narrative that didn't exist. In the total of two years that she was stalking her, she hired up to 25 people, including cops. Can you imagine being stalked for two years? I mean, she, first of all, two years ago, she was like 19, 20. Literally, this old lady being obsessed with her. It got so bad to the point where Park actually told Chia's parents saying that, hey, I actually think Madame Yoon is stalking because I mean, he didn't know to the extent of that as well. And as soon as Chia's parents found this out, they wanted to clear the misunderstandings. Now, first, they told Park, I mean, this is your mother-in-law. Like, you got to stand up to her. And this is really the part that is very frustrating to a lot of people who know the story. It's really also the mystery with Mr. Park. Why did he not stand up clearly to his mother-in-law? Because Chia's father actually says that Park could not stand up to her. Like he could not really say much to her. And the reason that a lot of people think is Madame Yoon was actually blaming Mr. Park saying that he came from a no-name family. He came from no wealth, no riches. I mean, he is a judge, but I allowed you to marry my wealthy daughter and now you're cheating on her? I mean, this was a family with a lot of wealth. So it is presumed that they probably promised him also a lot of things in his life and brought him up to the status to where they were when he came from a no wealth background. So when Park couldn't do anything, Chia's parents decided to go to their house and stand up to her. When Chia's parents went to go meet Madame Yoon to confront her and clear the misunderstandings, to their surprise, Madame Yoon still didn't believe them. She actually yelled at them by telling them, watch your daughter. Honestly, for Mr. Park being a judge, he's doing a terrible job. He should have been the one to step in the middle, clear everything up, saying that this is my cousin, this is where family, what are you talking about? But again, he also did not do that. I mean, where was Park's wife or Madame Yoon's daughter in all of this? Like, why didn't she try to stop her own mother? So when Chia's parents literally could not do anything anymore, they decided to get a restraining order against Madame Yoon. They actually went to court over this for multiple months and finally the court did favor in Chie where Madame Yoon could not contact the girl nor use slash hire someone to spy on her. Madame Yoon does not like losing and when this restraining order was issued she got even more angry. Oh now they're getting restraining order in order to make it easier to meet and cheat and have an affair. So Madame Yoon decided to hire her nephew again to do her final last plan, which was to get rid of Chie entirely. She knew that the nephew needed money and he agreed. This seemed like the only way that she could keep feeling superior. If the nephew was to succeed on the job, he would get in total of $200,000. So on March 6th, they already knew her schedule. They knew that she was on her way to swim. They took her inside of the van, taped her, kept her alive for about eight days. And who knows what happened in those eight days, nobody knows, but finally took her to the mountains and killed her. The most innocent girl you can ever imagine just maliciously executed. 
人。Now, of course, after all of that, there were many proof that the nephew received a large sum of money from Madame Yoon directly from her bank, and the police had enough evidence. Before the fugitives were actually arrested, they ran away to another country. So Madame Yoon and the nephew actually ran away to Vietnam first, and then they went to China. Now, unfortunately, to catch a fugitive in another country costs a lot of money, a lot of resources, and like your case have to be like. A big deal in order for police to use their resources. It is said that Chia's father was so so determined to catch them that he decided to use all of his life savings in order to put up a reward money and fly himself and like hire probably private investigators to catch them in China. When Miss Yun was brought to trial, she hired expensive lawyers and tried to say that she was not related to the case and that her nephew had done. All of this, and she has no idea what's going on. It is also said that she tried to bribe the nephew and his family, saying that if he took all the blame, that she would give the family a couple million dollars. Now, to the nephew, I mean, a couple million dollars—they're set for life. That is a big、um, bribe. Eventually, all three of them—the two people who were involved in the killing and Madame Yoon—was sentenced to life in prison. So, does the story end here? It really does not, because what happened after even outraged the crowd, the public even more. A little less than ten years into the sentence, Jia's family found out that Miss Yoon was actually not in prison. All this time, she actually had been getting special treatment. So into her prison sentence, somewhere along the line, she was granted to be put into a controlled hospital, or they call the VIP hospital treatment, and this is only for those who are severely sick. In the grant letter of why she was put into this VIP hospital, just to name a few things, it says she has diabetes, depression, breast cancer, Parkinson's disease, asthma, eye problem. I mean, altogether twelve diagnoses of health condition that she was supposedly dealing from. And the hospital room that she was in was a solo room, so she wasn't even sharing with anybody. And apparently, this was around two thousand dollars a day kind of hospital. So once Tia's family found this out, they decided to contact some people in the media, and they set up hidden cameras inside her hospital room to see if she really was sick or not. Now you can see in the video that she is needing assistance when the doctors and the nurses are in there. It's as if she's bedridden and. Can't do anything. She can't even eat without someone helping her. She is also seen here shaking her hand, saying that she can't eat properly because of Parkinson's disease. But as soon as the doctors and nurses leave, when she's alone, you could see her walking totally fine. They figured out that Madame Yoon was acting out all of this. What's even more outraging is that she was granted to leave and come back, literally like on a vacation. A murderer. With severe diseases, leaving to go to a wedding and coming back. So how could this be? Was it money? Was it bribery? How how is Madame Yoon getting away with literally everything? So Kugoshi Argoshita, a very famous true crime documentary series, the producer team actually found out it seemed like the doctors were falsifying all these symptoms and sending that to the prosecutors in order for them to approve. The grant for her to leave the prison. Come to find out, the prosecutors and the lawyer in charge of Miss Yoon were actually from the same school and class graduation as Madame Yoon. A whistleblower also came out and confessed that he heard one of the doctors taking care of Miss Yoon went to a dinner that was hosted by the Yoon's family. And that Yoon's family brought a large sum of cash and bribed the doctors as well. And of course, who was able to do this? Miss Yoon's husband. The media blew the story up, and they were able to bring Madame Yoon back into prison. The doctors and the prosecutors only were fined like a couple thousand dollars of money for falsifying the papers. Miss Yoon's husband was also very heavily criticized by the public after they found out what happened, and how they were able to bribe everyone with just money. One of the biggest questions that the public had was with Mr. Park. Again, ten years after she had died, when you know this whole thing was blown up again, Mr. Park put out a statement through a lawyer, and said, "I will always care." The burden of what happened to Chie. I feel the responsibility for not being able to suppress my mother-in-law's irrational behavior. In regards to why he remained silent after Chie's incident, he stated, "One is my mother-in-law, and the other is my cousin." 
I felt as if, as a judge who must uphold justice, I felt the need to keep a neutrality. And this statement, again, did not pass the vibe check. Like, neutrality? Your mother-in-law kill your innocent cousin, and how can you stand in the middle? Chia's father was so distraught over all of this and dealing with the court cases, he developed a disease and had to relocate to the mountains just for his mental and physical health. According to Chia's brother, Chia's mother used to be a very strong woman and after her daughter's death, she was never the same again. And throughout the years, she drank so much and she ate so little that she was found passed away in her apartment alone in 2016 from malnutrition. Chia's mother was 165 centimeters, around 5 foot 4, but she weighed 36 kilograms at the time of her death, meaning she literally could not eat and live all due to the pain from her daughter. It seemed like Chia's family still feel like they did not get the justice that they deserve. And everyone who was involved, including the doctors who falsified things, Yoon's husband, the prosecutors, I mean, everyone is still working fine and living their life. Park is said to have retired or quit being a judge after all the public outrage but has since made his own law firm and is still working in the law business. It is also said that he divorced from his wife or Madam Yoon's daughter sometime around middle of 2010s. But you know, he was still married to that family for like 17, 18 years since the incident. I don't know if I would be able to do that. Like if my husband killed my own family member, would I still be able to be married to my husband and still be with that those in-laws that's why i'm saying a lot of people think that you would have to be bribed by so much money and like things at stake your reputation in order for you to stay in that kind of toxic unreasonable household park also claims that because of all of this he had developed a panic disorder and had been hospitalized because of this so that was the story of the law student chihe who had her life taken away so early it was also said that actually miss yoon was diagnosed with a delusional disorder long time ago prior to these incidents so the fact that no one put control on her how why I, I don't know and the fact that judges are supposed to be judges prosecutors are supposed to be prosecutors and doctors are supposed to, like everyone's supposed to keep within their moral standards and everyone just decide to use their powers in order to benefit themselves chia's brother is still fighting hard to get this story out there to have as many people listen to this because because that's really the only thing he said he can do. If you were put into Mr. Park's situation, how would you have handled it? I mean, how much money does his family have that you feel so inferior to stand up to someone that is capable of something like this? It's really an unbelievable story. So let me know how would you have felt being in Mr. Park's shoes. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video.